So if you're in the market for a brand new phone, today these are your three best options. The iPhone 15 Pro Max, the S23 Ultra, and the recently released Google Pixel 8 Pro. But which one is the best choice for you? Well, we have 13 different categories to compare from the cost to the looks to the comfort, display, cameras, and everything else. Also, we're doing a giveaway of both an iPhone 15 Pro and an iPhone 15 to celebrate the launch of our new app, Wallpapers. Details on how to enter both giveaways are down in the description. And I want to start off with the price, as this would give you a good reference point throughout the rest of the video. The iPhone 15 Pro Max and the S23 Ultra both retail for $1,200, while the Pixel 8 Pro retails for $1,000. The Pixel does come with 128 gigs of storage as opposed to 256, but even if you bump that to 256, you would still end up paying less than compared to the iPhone and the Samsung. If you were to trade in an Apple, Samsung, or Pixel, they each have different trade-in values, with Samsung offering you the highest amounts. Also, both Google and Samsung have occasional offers and price drops if you just wait a few months. Unlike with Apple, which never has any discounts, and you can rarely find the latest iPhones discounted, even on other stores. So in terms of prices, the Pixel 8 Pro is the best option here, then the S23 Ultra, and then the iPhone. Now, they all have a very iconic look, which doesn't really change year on year, which I do admire, as they each have their own identity. Google with their iconic camera visor in the middle, Apple with their flat frame and the triple lens camera module on the left-hand side, and then Samsung with their rectangular shape and their five individual camera rings. I personally like all of their designs. I love that Google is now using a frosted glass back too with the 8 Pro, which actually feels smoother than both the iPhones and the Samsungs. But when holding them in my hands, they all feel equally as premium. Now, there is a good amount of difference when it comes to the colors that they each offer. The Pixel 8 Pro comes in three, the gorgeous blue called Bay, uh, with black and cream also being available. The iPhone comes in four colors, black titanium, blue titanium, silver titanium, and natural titanium, whereas the S23 Ultra comes in eight gorgeous colors, four of which are exclusive colors if you order online, and those also have this dual tone look to them. So when it comes to the looks, it is ultimately a matter of taste. Now, in terms of comfort, to me, the Pixel 8 Pro is the most comfortable one to use, not only because it's the narrowest, but also because it has the roundest frame, which blends in perfectly with the shape of my palm. The iPhone is the second, which still feels great in my hands, and I do actually get more grip due to its flatter frame, although compared to the Pixel, it still feels a bit sharp. And then we have the S23 Ultra, which despite its fairly rounded frame, I did find it a bit uncomfortable. Whenever I was watching content, especially in portrait mode, its almost 90 degree display corners would dig into my palm heavily, which wasn't an issue at all with the iPhone or the Pixel. So comfort wise, the Pixel is the best here, then the iPhone, and then the Samsung. But okay, how durable are these phones? So in terms of display scratches, from my personal experience with their previous models, the iPhone does scratch the easiest. In fact, even though I do have a screen protector right now on both the iPhone and the Samsung, the 15 Pro Max does already have a scratch from before I even applied the screen protector. Jerry Rig Everything did test this out, and in his testing, the iPhone appeared to actually have the most scratch-resistant display out of the three. Of course, I can only talk about my experience, and here, I found the iPhone to scratch the easiest, followed by the Pixel, and then the Samsung. Now, when it comes to the drop resistance, I've actually dropped my 15 Pro Max on the floor with the back facing it, and it did survive. Aside from a tiny scuff on the titanium frame, something that would be more obvious on the blue and black titanium models. Now, from all the drop tests that others have done online, it does actually seem like the 15 Pro Max is the easiest to break because of its titanium frame, which is more rigid than the aluminium frame on the other two, which in turn causes the back glass to break much easier. And between the S23 Ultra and the Pixel 8 Pro, it seems like the Pixel 8 Pro can withstand drops a bit better, as it doesn't have that curved glass on the front like Samsung does. So in terms of overall durability, the Pixel is the best here, then the Samsung, and then the iPhone. Now, when it comes to the display, I gotta be honest, they all have an incredible display. They're all extremely fluid at 120Hz, all with a dynamic refresh rate that can go as low as 1Hz, so using them feels buttery smooth. They all feature accurate colors, especially when you set a Pixel and a Samsung to their natural color modes. The iPhone only has its default natural mode. Which means that if you love these super saturated colors, you can only get them on the Pixel and the Samsung, with Samsung's vivid mode being a bit more vibrant than Pixel's. 
They're all amazing for watching content, although personally, I do prefer the Samsung here, as number one, it has a slightly larger 6.8 inch display as opposed to 6.7, uh, two, its rectangular shape means that the corners of your content won't get cut, like they would on the iPhone and the Pixel, and three, it also has the brightest HDR, which does make a big difference when you're watching YouTube in HDR or any other HDR movies. When using them outdoors, the iPhone is the brightest by far, with the Pixel being right in the middle and the Samsung being the dimmest. Now, there is a considerable amount of difference when it comes to the text scaling when you're browsing the web. The Pixel can display the most amount of text, uh, followed by the Samsung and then the iPhone, even when they all have the text set to the lowest setting and they're all, for example, in the same app Chrome. The iPhone does have the slimmest bezels, which I do really like, as it makes it look more futuristic just like its dynamic islands that does give you some additional functionality like being able to see the status of your takeaway or your Uber while you're in other apps, which I did actually find quite useful. Although Samsung and Google are better for watching content here as their single camera punch hole is less obtrusive. Overall, they all have an amazing display, Samsung being the best in terms of watching content, while the iPhone being the best for outdoor use, with the Pixel being right in the middle. Now, if you like what you're seeing on their displays, these wallpapers are from our two latest packs that we've just dropped in our app, Wallpapers. The first new pack for this week is Tranquil Towns by Wallrod, which features some super cute cartoony cities in a very googly style. So this pack will look awesome on a Pixel phone. Our second pack is Majestic Melt by Sam, which is a more abstract pack with 10 beautiful designs that will look incredible no matter which phone you use it on. Both packs are available in our app Wallpapers on iOS and Android. So what about their cameras? Well, we did test the cameras extensively in a number of side-by-side -side comparisons, which I do recommend you watch in case you want to learn about every single thing when it comes to how the cameras compare in up to 35 individual test categories. But for this video, I wanted to keep it simple. So if you mostly take outdoor shots in bright sunlight conditions, the iPhone is actually going to be the most consistent one, with consistently bright photos, good shadow and highlight detail, and fairly natural colors. Samsung does tend to oversharpen their photos a ton, and I'm personally not a fan of that, while Google does tend to occasionally underexpose its images. However, when Google does get things right, it gets them very right. The Pixel was able to produce some stunning looking photos, it's just that it wasn't as consistent as the iPhone was. Night mode was also the strongest on the 15 Pro Max, with the Samsung being a bit more noisy, while the Pixel was considerably blurrier, uh, with way more washed out colors. And the front facing camera was also more superior on the iPhone, with better highlight retention and a sharper image compared to both the Samsung and the Pixel. So for the types of photos that most people take, which are outdoor, night and selfies, the iPhone is going to be the best choice. The Pixel is in a good second place, especially since its zoom is very good at both lower ranges, higher ranges and in low light too, whereas Apple works best at lower ranges and Samsung works best at higher ranges but not in low light. Which leaves the S23 Ultra in the last place. Now, don't get me wrong, this is still an outstanding camera. It's just that it requires you to go into apps like Camera Assistant and Expert Raw to take full advantage of it. So iPhone first here, then Pixel, and then Samsung. But like I said, you remember that Samsung does have some very powerful hardware if you're willing to tweak your settings and edit your photos. But for most people, right out of the box, the Pixel and the iPhone will be a better pick. Do check out our detailed camera comparisons if you want to get a full picture. When it comes to video recording, they're all very good here. But the iPhone has the most detailed image out of the three also the best low light out of the three. It also has the smoothest transition between all three lenses. Uh, when you want to zoom in loads, it kind of feels like you're just zooming in on a single lens. The Pixel can also use all of its three lenses when recording 4K60 video, just like the iPhone, while the Samsung can only do so in 4K30. On top of this, the iPhone lets you record in log, which I've personally never used, but if you do like editing your videos, this will offer you more dynamic range and flexibility. Combine that with the ability to record using an external SSD, and yeah, the iPhone is definitely the best option if you're a vlogger or you simply like shooting a lot of video. The Pixel is a good second choice, as its daytime video was very good too, and its nighttime video was better than Samsung's, plus its upcoming nighttime video and video boost features do seem very promising. So iPhone first here, then the Pixel, and then the Samsung. Now, one of the biggest differences between these phones is going to be the software experience. And this could literally be an entire video in itself, so I'll keep it simple. The Pixel and the iPhone both focus on simplicity and ease of use over features. Their UI is very clean and very easy for anyone to grasp. That being said, the Pixel does offer you more. For example, since you're running Android, you can run two apps side by side compared to just one on the iPhone. 
you also get a ton of Google AI features like Audio Razor. Outdoors audio is always messy on a phone, especially when it's windy. But now the Pixel can clean this up for you. The ability to select the best face in a group shot, the ability to move a person or an object around and automatically fill in the gaps, and more. Samsung, on the other hand, offers you even more, maybe too much for most people. They give you countless quick toggles to control. You can have custom app folders in the app drawer, which you cannot have on the Pixel or the iPhone. You can tweak your camera settings heavily, like we talked about before. You can connect it to a monitor and turn your Samsung into a full-on desktop computer using DeX. And you can run three apps side by side rather than two or one. So if you do want a ton of customizability and features, Samsung is your best bet. Now, I should mention that using them feels equally as good. Animations are crazy fast and fluid, and none of these phones would ever lag on you, at least they didn't for me. Also, the Pixel 8 Pro seems to now have fixed the uh, overheating issue that the Tensor G2 inside of the 7 Pro had, so this is all good now too. And even though the Samsung and the iPhone only have 80 gigs of RAM compared to 12 on the Pixel, they've both been incredibly good at keeping apps open in the background, so no issues here either. I do have to give props to the Pixel 8 Pro for having the best typing experience I've ever had on a phone. Their haptic feedback is just incredibly good. So when it comes to the software experience, this is a matter of preference. The iPhone is the most restrictive, but also the most simple to use. The Pixel also keeps it simple, but offers you more freedom and more features, and then the Samsung gives you every single feature and every single option that you can think of. So at the end of the day, this is also a matter of taste. Okay, so what about um, unique hardware features? Is there anything worth mentioning? Well, the most unique thing about a Pixel is definitely its temperature sensor. And I gotta be honest, it's a gimmick and also not a good one either. There's no visual preview to it, so you just kind of have to put it above the object that you want to get a temperature of, select the item from a pretty small list, and then you'll get your result. The iPhone gives you three unique hardware features. The first being able to customize the action button, which you can map to any app or automation. The second is the LiDAR module in the back, uh, which is quite useful for measuring objects fairly accurately too. And the third is Face ID, which I much prefer over the fingerprint reader. With the S23 Ultra, you also get an S Pen, which you can use for a variety of things, from drawing to sketching to taking some quick notes. You can also use it to remotely trigger the camera. Personally, I don't really use the S Pen and same goes for a temperature sensor on the Pixel. Whereas things such as Face ID and the action button are what I use all the time every day. So I do feel like this would be the case for most people. So Apple does offer you the most unique hardware features here, then Samsung, and then Google. Now, when it comes to the speakers, I'll let you guys listen to this first. So when listening to them in person, the iPhone sounded the clearest, uh, Samsung was the loudest, the Pixel was very good too, almost as clear as the iPhone, but it did sound very mono, most of the sound only coming from the bottom speaker. Overall, the iPhone had the best sound, then the Samsung, and then the Pixel. Which brings us to the ecosystem, which, just like the software experience, we could literally make this into a dedicated video as there's just so much to say. But to keep things simple, Apple does offer you the most extensive ecosystem and the biggest number of extra features if you own any other Apple devices. Google offers you the least amount of exclusive features if you have any other Google products, although this is on purpose as Google aims to be open and offer their services to everyone. And Samsung is somewhere in the middle, where they're both open, but if you have devices such as Samsung fridges, Samsung TVs, Samsung laptops, you do get additional functionality. So. Apple first, Samsung second, Google third. Okay, so when it comes to charging, they all come with a USB-C port now. Thank you, Apple, or sorry, thank you, European Union. They all support fast charging, 50% in 30 minutes for the iPhone and the Pixel uh, with a 30 watt charger, and 60% in 30 minutes for the S23 Ultra with a 45 watt charger, all of which have to be purchased separately. Wireless charging is supported in all three, but the Pixel supports the fastest at 23 watts, as opposed to 15 on the Samsung and 15 on the iPhone, but on the iPhone, you have to be using a MagSafe charger, otherwise you'll only get 7.5 watts. Also, the Pixel and the Samsung both support reverse wireless charging too, so that you can charge your earbuds or your Samsung Galaxy Watch from the back of your phones, which the iPhone does not support. So in terms of charging, the Pixel is the best here, followed by Samsung and then Apple. Now, when it comes to the actual battery life, I haven't really had a chance to extensively test out the Pixel 8 Pro's battery life like I did with uh, the iPhone and the Samsung. 
However, when we were doing our camera comparisons, the Pixel died first. Plus, between the iPhone and the Samsung, the 15 Pro Max lasted me the longest. In fact, I have not been able to kill this in a single day of use, no matter how hard I pushed it. The S23 Ultra lasted me until late at night, whereas the 15 Pro Max still had around 20 or so percent at about that same time. YouTuber Simply Pops did an 8-hour battery drain test on all of these phones, and his results seemed to match my experience too with a Pixel having the weakest battery life, dying after about 8 hours, while the S23 Ultra still had around 24% left, and with the iPhone having 45% left, which according to Simply Pops resulted in the Samsung lasting for 11 hours and the iPhone lasting for 12. So you can expect the iPhone to last you the longest, followed by the Samsung and then the Pixel. At the end of the day, as you've seen from this video, they each have their own strengths and their own weaknesses, and some are better at certain things while others are better at other things. And at the end of the day, it is ultimately up to you to decide which of those 13 sections are the most important ones to you. Is it the camera, the display, or the amount of features that you get? Let me know which one would you go for and why, and don't forget to check out our detailed camera comparisons right here. I'm Daniel, this means Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.